Hey everyone, Rob here from Gunfather Milsim, and today I'm going to talk to you about how to add some kind of advanced camouflage elements to your airsoft replica. Now this is my Sima Platinum SR25. It is my DMR, and it is a gun I'm getting ready to use at a uh, big long 40 hour Milsim in October called Operation Underdog. Uh, so this gun was originally tan. Um, I actually prefer guns that are tan, and I did a, a big long video about how to paint this gun when I painted it tan. Now, you, as you can see, it's kind of varying shades of uh, green and brown right now because I'm setting it up for this op. Now, previously when I painted it, I mean, do I want some sort of camouflage element of my gun? Yeah, do I want it to look, do I want it to kind of blend into my body when I'm holding it like so and someone's looking across the field? Um, yeah, but I don't want a big black, long, very obvious looking gun here. Um, but I really didn't design my guns to, to kind of remain hidden for a long period of time. So at this game coming up, I'm gonna do basically a surveillance position um, where it's long term and I'm gonna be in a hide for a really long time. So I decided I'm gonna to have to up my camouflage game on my gun a little bit here. So the first thing I did was repainted my gun from the tan that it was to the green pattern you see here. It's the same kind of painting method I, I did in my how to paint your guns video where I just take a laundry bag laid over and just kind of spray on a pattern. I just added a lot of green and a little bit of brown to get this look. Next thing I'm gonna show you how to do is how to add a cloth wrap to the rail system and to the optic. Now what that cloth wrap is gonna do, it's gonna really change the texture of this so it doesn't look like a hard piece of metal. Okay, it's gonna make it, give you, make it kind of blend in better with the environment. What we are gonna do for that is I ordered some of these sniper veils off Amazon. Now these things are cheap. Okay, and they actually show up pretty good size. This one is this one is woodland. I ultimately chose not to use this one, but you can see, you know, the size of them. They're they're pretty good size. They cost like twelve dollars, and they come in all sorts of different colors. Um, actually, the first one I tried was this one, which is kind of an OD. I didn't really like this one. It was too light colored. I actually painted the entire gun and then decided I wanted to go darker. Uh, ultimately, what I went with was this color here, and you can see it's a little bit darker than the OD. I believe they called this uh, forest green. But whatever, this is what I ultimately went with. So what you're going to do is you're going to cut that into strips, long strips, strips like kind of like bandages. Okay, I found about six inches wide works best, and this is what we're going to use to create this cloth wrap. So now I'm at my workbench. I'm going to show you guys how to apply this, this cloth wrap. I took that sniper veil and I cut it into about a six inch strip and I cut a V at the top so I have something to tie. I'm gonna start up here near the muzzle on this flash hider and just do one overhand knot. Okay, I'm gonna lay that overhand knot over the barrel. I'm gonna start wrapping around that barrel to hold those loose ends in place. It doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't have to be uniform. In fact, it's probably better if it's not uniform, okay? And then we're just gonna start wrapping down the barrel and put the front sight up and wrap behind it. And put that front sight down to kind of hold that in place. I wanna use my bipod. So I'm gonna wrap around the bipod. I'm gonna cover the attachment screw because I'm not worried about removing it later. I'm gonna to try to get this cloth as tight as I can to the rail system. So I'm gonna go around the bipod and just keep wrapping. You wanna keep it somewhat tight, but it doesn't have to be pulling it as tight as you can. I'm gonna let the wrap kinda of layer up. I'm gonna to get to the end, and you're gonna see here at the end, I've cut another section so I can just tie it off. doesn't really matter where that knot ends up. It's gonna end up on the side. I'm just gonna do one overhand knot, pull it tight. It doesn't have to be pretty. You'll notice here, I have two hair ties. You can just use rubber bands if you want. And I pull these out to kinda of hold, hold it in place where I want it. These will come in handy later because I'm, I'm gonna add real vegetation, I'm gonna use these hair ties. And I'm gonna move on to the scope. I got a smaller piece. Uh, this one instead of six inches wide is about four. 
just because I need to kind of move around more to make this scope work. Once again, little cutout section here. I'm going to tie it around the front of the scope. The objective section. One time, I'm going to put these tails right there. I'm just going to go over them. And just like we did with the rail, we're just going to move down the scope. Come on, be careful here. Uh, decide what kind of parts of your scope you're going to need to actually manipulate. Uh, the magnification adjustment, I need that. Uh, this is basically the light. I don't really need that, but uh, because there's maybe a small percent chance I might someday, let's just keep that uncovered. Got to get a little bit more creative with the scope, how you're going to wrap it. I'm going to go around the back and over this section here, spread out that wrap how I want it. I'm going to wrap back around the front like a figure eight. Just try to get everything I want covered. Try to cover that top turret. Back around here. Check to make sure I'm getting what I want covered. Go back around the front here. Once again, this ends with a split that I can tie off. We're basically going to tie this back where I started. Here. So, there you have it. Rail wrapped, scope wrapped. Okay, so now we're back. Uh, this is all done, and as you can see, I actually added some real vegetation. Why? Because I went in my backyard and took some before and after photos. Now, I took a photo with nothing on the gun, just the regular paint. Then with just a cloth wrap and then finally adding a few pieces of vegetation and what you can see from those photos is really it, it's the real vegetation that does the work it does like 90 percent of the camouflaging and disguising this thing so it no longer looks like a gun and once again i you can use rubber bands but i use uh my daughter's hair ties here to one hold on this cloth wrap and two give me something to stick that vegetation and it doesn't take much you see i got like one two maybe like seven leaves here is all i got when you put those on there make sure you're careful that you can still look down the scope and it doesn't obstruct it at all and move it shake it and move it around and look at it again you don't want to put so much crap on there that anything is obstructing your objective lens because it's just gonna be a pain in the ass and you're not gonna be able to see so it really doesn't take much on there at all to really break up the silhouette of that rifle. And once again, that's what does most of the deed. So one last thing, when you buy this wrap brand new, it's gonna have kind of a sheen on it because it's, it's new from the store. Um, I recommend you wash it, clean it, preferably with some sort of detergent that doesn't have any sort of brighteners in it because those brighteners can reflect IR light. So if you're in like a low light situation, like I'm gonna be at this op and uh, somebody puts an IR light on you and they're looking through night vision, this would glow like bright white if it has that uh those whiteners in it so i used um sport wash is what i did i just i just took it after i was done putting it all together and i put a big mason jar put some sport wash put some water in there and just rinsed it out in there over and over again let it dry that's really going to help with that sheen from it being brand new it's also going to help with it not reflecting so much ir and uh, you're also probably going to want to dirty it up, throw some dirt in there, drag it through the mud, whatever, let it dry, and then put it on your gun. You really want it dirty, it's going to, it's going to help in the long run. So that's all I got on kind of advanced camouflage for your airsoft replica. If you like my content, please support it. Like, subscribe, hit the bell. You guys know how YouTube works. Better yet, um, support my content by uh, buying some merchandise. Go to my website, dieshowtactical.com. That's my company, and I sell a lot of slings and patches there. So take a look at my slings, and uh, if you like one, buy it. Thanks for watching.